Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Mr. Jamaica. What's going on? No, 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 I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. And when I mean all, I mean all. I mean our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. But if you want to see all our visuals, you go over to our YouTube channel. There you can find all our exclusive content only if you're a member now, okay? And how you become a member is under each and every video, including this one right here in the description section. There's a link that says join our membership. Click that link and it takes you through all the process. Thank you in advance and we love you. Man, hey man, listen man. Today is a special day, man. We down here in Atlanta, GA. We ran up on a jewel, a diamond, a guy who don't really need no introduction. If you're watching, I seen him on 85 South. Yeah, I seen him hey, in his story. Not only did I say, I seen him dealing with old boy too. What's old boy that used to be on his 50? What, what's that boy name? Um, Jack Thriller. Jack Thriller! <laughs> So y'all already know who it is, man. Key Wallace is in the building. Welcome to Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk. Um, it's, a, it's an honor, my brother. Appreciate you, black man. God bless. Black woman. Appreciate you. So, okay, I love to get to know the person that you are, or you were coming up. So you were born and raised? Um, Miami, Florida. Miami, Florida. Yes, ma'am. And how, did you love it? Because Miami, I've been to Miami many times. Um, and I love Fort Lauderdale sort of more than Miami, but um, tell me, were you at the beach every day? Um, no, like uh, you know when you when you're from somewhere, you don't appreciate it. That's I'm like from people, Jamaica, and I went to the beach all the I time. I feel you, but that's like if someone lives in um Arizona, and you ask them uh, had they been to the Grand Canyon, mm -hmm. they probably never went, right? Just because it's right there. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So as far as like Miami goes, like. The beach is for like a lot of out of towners. Really? You know what I'm saying like us that that's from Miami, we don't really appreciate it like that. And I probably been to the beach four or five times. Mm. And I'm from Miami. How so. old were you when you left Miami? When I left, um, I actually left in 2015. Oh, so you were grown? Um, yes, and I moved to Cali. Okay. But I did a lot of like a lot of time incarcerated so mm -hmm. I didn't really get to experience Miami, Miami like that. Yeah. You feel me? As far as um as a as a native. Yeah. You feel me? So Yeah. No, but okay, so growing up, were you raised with your mom and your dad in the same household? Um no, my mom, yes. And my stepdad. So where was your dad? Um he was he was everywhere but in my life. So did you know him? I I met my dad when I was um, nine years old. Mm. That's when I met him for the first time. For the first time, um, was that because you were asking your mom, like, "Mom, where's my dad? Who's my dad?" Is that the reason why you met him at that um, time, or no? He, he just, just turned up. He just popped up one day. Okay. And what was your thoughts? You good? You trying to break me down? <laughs> I'm trying to, like, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm like, uh, I'm like an emotional dude, man. And That's it's like, fine. When I go to digging deep, you know what I'm saying? It's like all kind of, it's like, um. It's therapy. Oh my God. It's like, um, it's like, it's like you're not asking the adult me. Mm -hmm. It's like you're asking the kid, the kid. me. Yeah, because, man, because, it's like the yeah, emotions come out. That's what I'm telling people. I'm like, you have to because in order, okay, all of us have some sort of trauma at one point or other, no matter what you've been through. It could have been just your mama told you no for something, and then, you know, I've heard all of these different things. But a lot of times people react as they get older certain ways and don't understand why they're like this or why and whatever. What so saying, you got to like, go if, back if, to the... If I react to that... Yeah, you got to go it's gonna back. It's going to be nine-year-old me. Okay, go ahead. I want to hear the nine... That's, that's what I want. Yeah, and, and to be honest with you, man, like we, it, it's a thing where... You, these are things that basically, these are challenges that really, when I look back at certain things, it's things that, and as you get older too, I'm going to say you, I don't know how old you are, but I find myself really going off balling in the living room sometime at the house about stuff that happened a long time ago. 
and and I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm the type of dude that a lot of time that's that's breakthroughs. But at any rate, man, you know, when I looked at your story, bro, and I looked at just your, the, your path you've been through, um, going through all the stuff that you've been through, man, you have a reason to, you know, show emotions. You know what I'm saying? Your truth helps other people. I've seen, man, I had a lady on my show, uh, the blind goddess, man. That woman messed me up, bro, because of everything I seen in her life, it never got better. Everything, the pri her mother killed a, a, a dude who raped her when she was seven. It never got better. And then as she grew up, you have to go watch this episode, uh, she kind of took the kids, right? Then she had to go, to, they shipped her to Germany, her and her, four, her, her brother, to her dad, and he ended up start raping her. So they ended up leaving her. She, they took him to jail because when the administration started, it, it never stopped. You see what I'm saying? And so now she's over there stuck with her brother and sister. They don't even have nobody over there. So now they stuck. So a lady in Florida ended up actually sending for her as she going through all this. I'm just telling you her walk and it was so long. It wasn't like I'm doing it. But the the one thing that once she grew up there, that was a safe haven until she turned, she left there probably around about 15 to 21. But when she get on her own, she goes out and they ride and her and her, her, and her uh, daughter, her and her, her and her sister who had had a baby and, and her niece and she flips the car because somebody that uh, goes through a seizure hit her, and she flips the car, and she don't wake up till eight months later, and her and her her sister, and her her niece is buried as John Doe's, because nobody could. She don't have no family, and she couldn't see a thing when she woke up. She was blind, and and, and this is crazy, but that's the kind of story I'm gonna send that to you, and you watch it. And you tell me what you think. She gave me hope to understand that nobody should make excuses, bro. She's still fighting on. And the last thing she told me, and I'll say this, and you can go watch it. She said her brother, which was, she, he had been locked up. All of them, they all went to jail. You know, they, they didn't have a chance coming up as kids because the mama killed the dude that, when they were kids. So they was just going around. But two, both of the brothers end up in prison. And she ends up, uh, she ends up, he kills himself in prison. But he wrote her a note before he died because she was going for a pageant and said, go get that crown, but I can't take this no more. Mm -hmm. Think about how long they went through this. You know what I mean? From being six, five, all the way up. And I sit there and dealt with that woman. She cried and I, hey man, I, that's the only thing that messed me up, bro. I couldn't deal with it because nobody has an excuse, man, when you watch people like this. You understand what I'm saying? She went through all of that, and she still to this day she can't see. But I didn't tell you she went through some surgeries after that. You just have to watch this video. Yeah, blind goddess, she that is an That's amazing. That's probably the most different interview that I ever did on this show. And she has a crown now from being a um, pageant Miss Diva, blind diva. And she still go around and try to help people. Mm -hmm. You can't see or nothing. So that's the game. That's the thing that really, really tells me that. Like she still calls us and check on us and everything, but it tells you I can I can go on. You know what I'm saying? I can move on. You know, I, I, I like I said, we're about to get into your story. Your story is so dope because somebody else then went through something out there. So with them going through something, they're going to see you and they're going to know that they can make it through. Mm -hmm. they, they're not landing on shows. They're not getting in positions where people on the internet love them. They don't know how to deal with it. They haven't, they haven't, hit that point where they can talk about it either. So they don't, you give people courage to talk about it. Am I right? Think about that. You doing what you're doing on these podcasts will give other people hope to speak out about things that they, they, they've gone through. Mm -hmm. Let's get into so, it. So I want to go back to so that nine-year-old you when your dad showed up. What was your thoughts the first time when you saw him for the first time? And what did he say to you? Um, it was me and my my, my own big sister, Precious. Mm -hmm. um, we have the same dad out of seven kids. Okay. Me and her. So, um... You're the oldest? No, she is. She's the oldest, and then yes, you second. I, I, yes. Okay. So, <laughs> it, it's crazy. He, 
I'll never forget this, man. This is crazy. He gave her, I'm nine years old. He mm-hmm. gave her 60 cent and he gave me 30 cent. Mm-hmm. That was it. Like, he didn't say. He didn't say nothing to you? No. Nah. Like, we was happy. I was happy because <laughs> back then, 30 cent, I went straight to the uh, to the store lady house. Uh-huh. And got, got me some a candy. Frozen, yeah, a little frozen cup and little, little uh, candy. Yeah. Um, but uh, how did you feel knowing that that was your dad and that's your first time seeing him? Or as a kid, you didn't really care? Now, if, if I didn't know, um, I didn't know, I didn't know that having a dad was important or not having a dad right. was important. Like, I really didn't know the difference. Like, because you had your stepdad in your life. No, he was on crack, man. Oh, your stepdad was on crack. Yeah, man, he was beating my mama, so it ain't like. So you didn't have that positive male role nah. model. No, nah, the streets. Mm-hmm. I had the streets. Mm-hmm. And I always had the streets. Right. You know what I'm saying? One thing, one thing about the streets, you always got the streets. The streets ain't never going to leave you. Mm-hmm. They not good for you. The streets mm-hmm. ain't good for you, but streets... You know what I'm saying? You got some people, man, who get more love from from gangs than from their family. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? More love from cliques than from their own family, their own siblings. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was I was nine years old stealing. You know what I'm saying? I was nine years old breaking in houses, man. Like, niggas can't say that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't talking about, I'm talking burglaries mm-hmm. at nine. You feel me? When wearing next door neighbor clothes, like how you break somebody how little next door you <laughs> and wear their clothes, and they see it and know. Yeah, dude took his shoes off my feet one day. Uh uh-uh. uh. My little brother know. He was, and what he did was, you do? He was walking with my mom. Like we was talking about this the other night. He was like, "I said, nigga, how you know that?" He said, "Bro, I walking with mama and I seen a nigga take his shoes off your feet." Like, come on, was poor man. Like. Was she working? Oh uh, man, why y'all doing this? Y'all wow. But yeah, no, listen. She 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 was my mama got her first job like like her whole life. Mm-hmm. She got her first job in like like 1995. Oh wow! She ain't never worked, never. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? In like 1995, she had got her first job, right? Mm-hmm. And I still remember where it was at. It was at a restaurant called on Royal Castle, right? Mm-hmm. And the crazy thing is that I still remember how my mom used to make. She would make like 90 between 90. And a hundred dollars a week. Mm. You know what I'm saying? This back in the 90s. So, and because she just like got off of drugs. Cause my stepdad like had my mom on. She wasn't never on drugs. Like never. You know what I'm saying? And, and he used to beat her and have her strung out. Nah, she wasn't strung out. Cause you know it's different type of dope friends, you feel oh, me? Okay. So yeah, she just was, you know what I'm saying, occasionally mm-hmm. with it or whatever, right? Um I ain't never tell nobody this story. Never. Wow. Only my siblings know this. You know what I'm saying? So, and she met him in jail. Like, uh, her brother passed the address to a dude, and the dude sold the address to Eric, which became my stepdaddy. And he started writing my mama. That's how they even met. (laughs) You feel me? So, um, I didn't know they do that in jail, sell addresses. Oh, yeah, for like pen pals they swap, and stuff. Yeah, they swapped that, wow. they swapped my mom out, and um, and that's how they met, you know what I'm saying? So, when he came home, he got on drugs, bad crack, too. It wasn't like no powder, no, no powder, rich man, mm-hmm. it was on crack, you know what I'm saying? So, 
But my mom got off. This is why I respect my mom. I respect her because she's my mom, but mm-hmm. I had so much respect for her because she got off of drugs for her kids. She didn't wow. have to like go to a program or nothing. That's strong. She That's got, strength. Yeah, man. Like she got off That's of drugs strong. for her kids. That's why she got off mm-hmm. of crack. Yo, I ain't talking alcohol or nothing. Got a monkey. How up long off was back. she on it for? Uh, it was it was a, just a few years. It wasn't okay. even long, you know what I'm saying? But but on, still, man, to get out you, to do that, that's still that, that ain't cold. That's crack. Right. Once you hit that, that's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. It's like it how you more gone than heroin. I'm from the hood. I done sold everything, so I know the difference. Like mm-hmm. crack. Once you hit that glass, that's it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And to be able to shake off that man for your kids. You know what I'm saying? I I I I got the highest respect for her. You know what I'm saying? And out of seven kids, <laughs> well, I put my mama through the worst. Well, it wasn't even no competition. I put my mama through. <laughs> I caught my first child at nine years old, man. Wow. What did you do? Other than stealing. I hit somebody in the head with a pipe. Yeah. Why? Because they caught you stealing? Uh, no, because it was like <laughs> it was like a fight going on. You know what I'm saying? And he was older. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And me and two of my homeboy, we had on uh, jumped them, and I hit him in the head with a pipe, man. And and at nine years old, <laughs> I did three days. At nine years old, three in juvie, three days, man, because I got locked up on a Friday, so I couldn't the stand in front of the judge. Yeah, yeah, it, it was juvenile. It was the right. same. I couldn't stand in front of the judge. It's a Monday, and it was like, um, it was like. It was more scarier than when I went to prison at 14. Why? Because I I I knew nothing about it. Right. And um and and the lady who was like processing processing us in it was a, it was a, it was a Spanish dude who walked by. I never forget this. She say she say "Poppy, which one you want? I have him in there sucking your dick all night." Yo, I'm nine. Yo, I was so scared. Yo, wow. I was like, it was like, yo, like I, I still remember that. Yo, it was so, yo, it was like, and a young dude, a jit, who we call from Florida, we call kids jits. A jit committed suicide or no? Because of that. Um, not for like, I'm guessing something else, but he committed suicide or no? You would think that that would have scared you straight where you wouldn't be trying to commit no more crimes after that because you don't want to be in that situation ever again? Um, I agree to an extent because at the same time, it's like you have to adapt and you have to survive. And when you're in the streets, you got, you got to adapt. And the only, only way you can adapt to the... Now, if you're not in the streets, that's one thing. But if you're in the streets, the only way you're going to adapt to the streets if you're doing something illegal. That's it. Ain't no such thing as you in the streets chilling. Can't chill with killers and not become a killer. Right. That ain't no sense. They're going to force you to kill. They're going to mm. make you kill something. Like, I ain't talking about fake killing either. I'm talking about really putting something down. You know what I'm saying? And um. So the first time you got in trouble, you went to um, Juvie. Was your mom on drugs at that time? Um, yeah, yeah, because I was nine. That's like okay. when at the same time I met my dad and everything. Everything. It's like that's when life hit me. It's kind of crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was when I was around like eight, I saw three dudes get killed. Like for the first time. Yeah, like in front of me. Right. Like I'm talking at a crap game. I'm up, I'm there just chilling. Shots rang, got three dudes dead, and I'm just there looking like this, huh? Didn't run or none. Nah. I was scared. I was like froze. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And the crazy thing about that is like like 15 years after me seeing that, the same dude that caught them three bodies mm-hmm. became one of my arch enemies in the hood. Mm. I was trying to tear his top off too. Yeah. Yeah. But that's but like when I like the reason I don't mind talking about my past, but when I do, it's like it's something because I bury it. You can never get rid of it. You only can bury it. But when I talk about it, it's like it erupt. But that's why I don't. That's why I don't like being in Miami. 
Because when I pull up on them blocks, you know what I'm saying? I be like, that's what such and such got dropped at. That's what such and such got dropped at. And then it's like a chill to come over. You know what I'm saying? It's one thing when you, it's one thing when you watching stuff happen. And it's another thing when you the reason because stuff going down. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people, man, a lot of people be, oh, this, that. Oh, and, and they feel they got the, um, they feel they got the, not saying nobody, I'm not nobody to say, can't say this up. That's not me. You feel me? But man, don't be saying stuff if you don't understand it. You don't understand how them young niggas is. You don't understand what they going through. So you got these niggas be talking about, talking about, um, oh, rappers this and rappers that and rappers this and rappers that. I be like, bro, first of all, the problem, it ain't the rappers. The problem is the conditions of the hood. You got to address that before you call yourself trying to address a rapper. The conditions need to change in order for the music to change. It's the hood. The hood is the problem. You feel me? So you got to take that energy that you're saying about this person and that person and confront the streets with it, man. And if you ain't willing to confront the streets with it... I'm going to ask you something, man. Like, you you, you, you been dealing with... you. I see you online, you drop, you know, lyrics and, you know, positivity and... Just trying to help people, man. How did you cross over? Uh, give me the story on how you even got to that. You know what I mean? Because you, you, you was here, and something happened to change you and make it to where you, you know what I mean? Cause um, I, I, I was, I was, um, I used to rap like about a lot of gangster stuff. Was you signing anybody or no? Um, no, at the time I was writing about all that gangster stuff, I was um aligned with um Rico Love. Okay. You feel me? Like we was we had a little situation going on. He sent me a few beats. I even had a track with Usher on the hook that night. What? Yeah. Usher. Ain't it good? <laughs> yeah, it never got released. Never got released. You know the Rico Love, he the writer. You yeah, feel me? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, for sure. I had a record with um, Usher, it never got released. Never. I'm not by the line say go stream it over here. <laughs> I'm not by the line. You feel me? But um Rico Love and um one of Rico Love producers, his name was Diego Av. You feel me? So we was in, we was aligned, and we was doing a, you know, doing a few things or whatever. But um, when my mom and my daughter passed, I made a song about it, a freestyle on a uh, Trick Daddy Thug Holiday beat. Right? Give me, uh, how did it go? Give me some bars out of it. Whoo! Yeah, brother, yeah, honey. I take it there on Boss Talk. Yeah, it was a hundred years ago, brother. But you don't, you don't remember it? I'm not really, cause I don't curse no more neither. Oh, and we it, were cursing. Yeah. Ooh, you were taking it there. It was bad, uh, yeah. It, I'm like, okay. I, other, I wouldn't want you like, to do that. No, I thought it was like I it, thought it was somewhere you were trying to. You nah, know what I mean? Nah, I was ex I was mad at God. I ain't it? Bro, I hated God then. So, like, so the way it I, was. Yeah, the way I rap now, like it was nothing like that, bro. I hated God, bro. Like. How you take my mom and my daughter and expect me to pray to you? What? It was pressure. Like, yeah. I hated God. You feel me? So when I dropped the rap, people went to like saying, oh, the music brought me close to God. That's what they were saying. So I was like, how my music brought you close to God? And I, nigga, I hate God. That's how I felt inside. You feel me? So I did it again. It went viral again. So I'm like, like man, all this gangster stuff I'm dropping and it ain't even moving. But the conscious stuff is what's moving. So I played with God. I played with him. I thought I played with him. <laughs> I played with God, so I started faking. I was a fake nigga. I was faking. My first few records, I was making it seem like I was all into God and God this because I was just doing it for attention. And then God sat me down. He sat me down. And I told only one person this story ever. God sat me down, man. 2014, you feel me? And this is what he said. It's going to take a long time for you to see any kind of benefits from this. But if you do it, I'll make you successful. That was 2014. Last year, it's the first year that I made money from music. Wow. Made 150000 last year. And it was the first time that I ever made money from music. 
And last year I did like 30 shows From 2014 To 2022 I probably did like 10 shows dog. But you was making music Yeah But I wasn't making money Just cause you make music Don't mean you making money Correct But were you how, What did you do different Last year Make that young brother my medicine, my little brother. And that's what God wanted. That was it. That's that what was it. Up. He the reason I'm here. Really? Like, on this podcast? Yeah. Man, like, as of right now, all praises to the most high. When they even sit me down, they got to give me like 1500 for a podcast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He the reason I'm here. And when I check y'all page, I say, I say, I'm going to go. <laughs> I say, no, I'm, I promise I'm dead serious. You feel me? Like, I don't, I don't, because it's like, because it's like, man, I say, I say all kinds of stuff out of my mouth, man. Yeah. yeah. And I don't, I don't like talking a lot like that because I don't want to make it, I don't want to come off as this, man, I can't fake it, bro. Like, I. Wow. I want to ask you about that day. And I know you, I don't want to take you there alone, but um, you, to lose your mother and your daughter on the same day, that was extraordinary when I researched you. Um, and I, and I, you know, I, I try to figure out how you made it through it. You know what I'm saying? Well, it had to be God to even get you to where you could even make it through something like that. Um, where did you find your strength, man? You want me to lie? No, I want you to, I want you to tell the <laughs> truth about it. I mean, you know, to, because for that to happen, you know what I mean? On the same in the same moment, and the, being the type of guy that you were, how did you make it through it? You know what I mean? I didn't make it through it. I just don't. I just don't let it. I just don't let it affect me no more. I ain't got over that, man. I ain't got over that. You know what I'm saying? Like I got a big old picture of my mama. As soon as I open my eyes, she on the wall looking at me. Like I know you have nightmares, baby. I'm right here watching you. I got you. He didn't want to call me and told my mom was dead. Him. Wow. I was in the house stressing because my daughter just died. I wasn't even at the hospital because the hospitals was like 30 minutes apart from each other. My daughter was at uh, Joe DiMaggio in Hollywood. My mom was at Miami Jackson in, in Miami. So I'm going from this hospital to that hospital. And my ex-wife was from Jamaica as well. So mm -hmm. I'm going to this hospital and that hospital. This hospital, I'm back and forth. So my siblings, of course, they with mama. You feel me? My wife, of course, she with my daughter. I have to be on both scenes. So every now and then, my brother, them will go see their niece. My sister, them will come see their niece. Different hospitals. Different hospitals, man. You feel How me? How far so apart? 30. 30 minutes. Like 30 minutes, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So, but my wife, she ain't leave. She ain't, she ain't want to see my mama. This her daughter. You feel me? Right. So it's like... I'm the one got to go back and forth. So I just said, man, F for everybody. I went home. You know what I'm saying? And it was, it was like, it was like quiet, but it was loud. You feel me? Nobody went on there. So it was quiet, but it was like loud, bro. It was like so, it was like so loud. And he called me. My daughter had already slipped and passed. He called me that night at 10 o'clock. He didn't even say nothing. He just was crying. So I already knew what it was. You feel what I'm saying? So at that moment, I just was like, man, I ain't care about nothing, bro. Like, I did some of my bad stuff, man. I did some of my bad stuff, dog. I, I knew my mom wasn't going to make it. I ain't even pray for her. Not to sound heartless or nothing. It's because of the bad stuff that I did. You know what I'm saying I knew, but I, 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 I fell out with God because of my daughter, not because of my mama. You can't take my daughter; she's twelve. Yeah, I felt I felt it was real. I felt like you really tried me. Like my mom, I did a lot of bad stuff. I was accused of a lot of bad stuff. So you feel like God was just dishing it back to you? Not with my daughter. With my mom. With your mom, I'm talking about. Because I like, when I sat at the table with my brothers and we mm -hmm. sat down and I told them that I ain't pray for mama, niggas looked at me like I was crazy. 
You feel me? But it just was because of the stuff that we did. And I'm not the biggest, baddest person ever in history. You know what I'm saying? But 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 the stuff that we did, it'll make a nigga move out of town. We'll run a nigga out of town with the stuff we was doing. You feel me? It was like, it was so evil. It was like evil. It was like demonic. It was like so, bro. It was like, you ask this nigga, man, yo, I don't sleep because I can't sleep. Because when I try to when I try to sleep, it's, I wake up. It's like it's like the souls, bro. It's like the souls, bro. It's like all the souls that's gone haunting. It's, yo, it's like it was like them niggas won't let me sleep, yo. Like for nothing. Why do you feel like you you went that dark at such a young age? Why do you feel that that happened to you? Looking back now, why do you feel that? You went that route. Um, prison. Prison turned you into that? Yeah, because I went to prison for something I ain't do. And I caught six years for something I ain't even do. At 14. And I ain't, I ain't robbed that lady, man. 14 I'm years old. I ain't robbed that lady, dog. Like, I'm free, bro. If I robbed that lady, I said, I ain't robbed that lady, man. It was a white lady. You know what I'm saying? She said I robbed her. Pointed me out. According to them, she pointed me. You know, I ain't to do no line up. They just gave me a paper with my face circled Say she said it was you. Because you're just a typical black person. You crack a private line. They, they ain't stood in no line up, man. You feel me? They brought the paper and said, did what she said. And it's just me circled. You know what I'm saying? So, and they gave me six years for that. And, um. Wait a minute. Why didn't you go? Did you go to a. a Grown up prison or a children's prison? Um, it ain't no. It went. It was. It was wild, old, but it went to a certain age, so it ain't matter. Cause you can be in there fourteen, and nigga can be in there twenty two. Wow, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So it ain't even matter. Know what oh, I'm saying? Really? I thought they so, only stayed there till eighteen, and then they. Whoa, up. no, nah, mm -mm. nah. Once you get direct filed, you know what I'm saying? If you in juvenile. That's one thing, but when you get the wreck file, that means they charge you as an adult. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's Florida. Florida okay. don't play. So you, you know went to an adult prison then? Um, no, I went to prison with adults in it. With adults in but it? But it was kids in it as well. Oh, okay. You feel what I'm okay. saying? So it's like... um. And you had a public defender? You had a... Oh, it ain't matter. It was, it was for a lot of them. You could have Johnny Cochran. I'm going cry again. you a hundred years. Really? <laughs> it was a white lady said I robbed her. And I had to pay your lawyer. And my lawyer told me we could take it to trial, but if you lose, they don't give you life. So you didn't go to trial? No, I couldn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, the first offer was 25. The second offer, I'm 14. Mm -hmm. The first offer was 25. The second offer was 20. The third offer was 14, and they stayed on 14 for like a year because I did 17 months in the county jail. So they stayed on 14 years for like a year, and my mom was like, Paper take the 14. What? Is you what? Is you crazy? Yo, they already was beating me up in jail. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 5'11, 125 pounds. Man, them people were beating me up in there, bro. Like, every time my mama leave, she gotta leave her son, yo. She kind of visit on the phone talking to me. We talking, and she gotta leave me, dog. And they take me back in there where the wolves at, bro. And niggas beating me up. I'm trying to fight back. I can't can't beat them because they jumping me. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, I'm blacking out. Nigga bumping my head on them. I wake up, nigga stumping me, man. Like, and I ain't do nothing to these dudes, dog. I, I didn't do, I just was from Miami. Locked up in Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. So they oh, nigga, you from Miami. Bop, 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 bop. You didn't have any other people in Miami that you could pair up with that could like cause ain't, you it ain't work like that. It didn't work like that? Nah. I thought people click up like all yeah. of the But they I was from another county. Locked up in another county, so it wasn't that many of us there. Okay. If this was prison, you can click up with the cities. Because mm -hmm. people be from everywhere in prison. Right. But, <laughs> and, and when the people gave me them, when the people gave me the uh, six year dog. Angry. Did you ever see any of those guys that was jumping on you in the county? Like later on in prison? In prison? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I saw one. You know what I'm saying? And, and at the time I saw him, like, I had. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't step up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we fought, but we really couldn't throw down because of prison politics. Fort Lauderdale and Miami and West Palm got to stick together against the entire state of Florida. 
So yeah. I really couldn't fight him because of the politics in prison. You know what I'm saying? But uh, me having to adapt, me having to adapt to all of the bad things in prison is what is what like messed my mind up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like my homeboy had um he had nine days to go home off for four years. And he got killed right in front of me in a child line. Mm. And he did four years, but he only had nine days to go home. Mm. He was 19. You know what I'm saying? So it's like like seeing all this, I had to adapt to that. But I was so scared. You feel me? I but was you so, couldn't show it? No. I, it, the beast came out. Like, I actually... I ain't never say this, man. I don't even think I say this on 85. I welcome the demons in me. I welcome, I welcome. For the strength. Uh, what? I had to because me, me, my conscience wouldn't allow me to get that dark because I was a good kid. You feel me? Yeah. As, as, at heart, I was. You feel me? I still, I was a kid. Let me, let me, let me say this. Did you, being in there and being young, I know how the guards are in Texas, but how the guards, like, did they try to, like, they would send people in on you or try to be oh, corrupt? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? No, Because yeah. they're trying to figure out ways to be even more evil in the midst of evil. No, you had guards who were, like, bet money on certain That's people right. with fights. You know what I'm saying? You had guards, like, giving, giving ex exclusive shanks, like, like, shanks you can't make. And no, and they getting. I ain't gonna say her name, but it was a it was a a, a, a Spanish sergeant, and she was. It's crazy. How you a sergeant that work at a prison, but you a Latin queen? That was crazy, wow. bro. So the Latin kings had one up on everybody because of her, mm -hmm. and she was a sergeant. It's like <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So. <laughs> <laughs> you can't beef with no guard, bro. Like if you fall out with a guard, you done. Did any? Did you ever see anybody attack the guards? Um, yeah, but it was due to um riots or no, nah, man. Like sexual acts, man. Like you had guards molesting kids, bro. Wow, you had guards like molesting kids in there. All all of us kids, we was young. You know what I'm saying? So you had guards like molesting kids. You know what I'm saying? Like prostitution. Selling kids. Yo, it was, man. That 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 place, like, that place, that place messed my mind up, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, most of my most of my sleepless nights be from there. You know what I'm saying? Like, my bunkie got raped. The nigga that slept on the top bunk. Mm -hmm. And this was, like, my first, um, my first five months in. Yo. I still remember the nigga who did it. Like, the nigga who did it, like, I always said, a nigga from Jacksonville, I ain't gonna say a name, but I always said, even to this day, I probably gotta get that out of my heart, but I always said, if I saw that nigga, I'd kill him. Even as a changed man, I always said that. Because that nigga was wrong, dog. You don't do that, bro. You don't do nothing like that. Yo, that's some weirdo type stuff, dog. And they tried to get me. That's how I got stabbed. Because I, I told the nigga, about to ask you yeah, that. I told the nigga, he gotta kill me. I told him, I said, man, you got to kill me, dog. Pop, nigga, swung on me. Whole lip. Can't hanging down over here, like, teeth went in my lip, like, all kind of nigga pushed my grill back, like, for nothing, yo. And I was reading the Bible, too. I was reading the Bible when they did that. <sighs> was that the worst thing that ever happened to you while you were there? Oh, yeah, because it turned me to a monster. I had to, What? And you never let, once you came out, you never let that monster go. No, I'm going I'm to walk up too, like when he, because you had to be about 19 when you was released, right? 20. You was 20. Yeah, you were right explain, on the head. Explain to me, like, how was it coming, you right getting head, out brother. into society with that mentality that you had when you was locked up? No, because I, I'm now I'm out, and I don't know that they shooting that. You got to remember, when I went in, they were fighting. And you still angry? Yeah, as soon as I got out, like the first month. They shooting at me. Bow, 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 bow. Like, what? But my homeboys going through beef that I inherited. Mm -hmm. 
And I didn't even know they were beefing. They ain't tell me, hey, yo, watch out, buddy. This is what we going through. They ain't even tell me that. And this is still in Miami because you still went in Miami. back to Miami. Okay. Yeah, we walking down the street and people just started shooting. Pa, 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 pa. Like, man, what y'all niggas got going on? Oh, no, I want such and such. The same dude who I told you when I saw kill them three people when I was little. Yeah, it, yeah now, that's who you now started. It's, we done, now it's, how them young niggas say it was up. It was up, but they weren't ready, though. They weren't ready. They was ready because they... They took a lot. They took some niggas down. Did you end up? Did you end up going, getting back, bumping your head again, or did you, or, you, or were you good from that point on? Man, I caught a murder charge. No, man. How long after that? <laughs> a few years. I mean, after being released, you so you went out for two years. I'm just trying to. I, a few years, you know what I'm saying? And I had caught a. That was bad, bro. I like after I got out. You know what I'm saying? I caught two aggravated assaults with firearms. Know what I'm saying? Now I'm on house arrest. How you catch a murder child on house arrest? Yo, this crazy. You feel me? <laughs> it was like it was like some crazy. And but they they couldn't throw that murder on me right there. Know what I'm saying? Because I was on house arrest. But they accused me of. They tried to accuse me of it. Know what I'm saying? Somebody got somebody got somebody somebody mama got flipped, man. They wow. tried to throw that on me, man. I'm like, how I did that? I'm on house arrest. Cause she was a victim. She was on my case, and they tried to throw that on me. I'm like, man, I was in the house, man. What y'all cracker talking about? You feel me? So, how much time did they give you for that? No, nah, I did. Uh, I did house arrest, and they put me on um, probation. Okay. So my, you know, you know your stuff. Mm -hmm. So my sentence was on five year probation. Five years probation. How my partner right now? Shout out to Money Moses. He locked up. He on our co-host. He right now he was on full probation. Now he's locked up, so we want him to get out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But he got them kids, man. Y'all gotta let him up out of there, man. Yep, he's trying my, to do the right thing. My sentence, my sentence on that on that uh, aggravated assault, it was five year paper. Uh, I violated the five year paper with a murder charge. That's when they took me down. They had me in there questioning me. Um, do you know this person? I never saw the nigga of a day in my life, officer. And that's when the nigga, like I said on Los Dum, I these niggas be faking. That when the nigga Jocelyn husband, the girl Jocelyn from Love and Hip Hop, yeah. That when her husband. Somebody he killed my own boy. I'm like, nigga, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The gang the gangster. Wow. The gangster, the one who on TV, the, the gangster, the real nigga, the, the one that's the real nigga in the street. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, police. The, but with you now changing a whole new leaf on life and trying to help people. How do you uh, how do you deal with the anger? How do you get past like when somebody like that do something and you feel like that? You know what I mean? They done you in like that. The the beauty of what I've gone through, the beauty of that, it gives me the courage to go talk to the streets because I know what they going through. So that's why I say when niggas be saying stuff like rappers this and rappers that, I say yo. Nigga, address the streets because that's where all of the influence come from. All of the influence that's in music, the core, the root of that influence is the streets because the streets influence the rappers. So all of that influence comes from the streets. So we have to change the hood. Shout out to my brother Golden Child in Chicago with the Nation of Islam. When I go to Chicago, the west side of Chicago, we have a truce on the west side of Chicago with the vice lords. Not through our music, though. From our presence being in the streets. Wow. I love you, brother. How y'all put us doing, man? Oh, nigga trying about to kill him. Okay, what you about to kill him for? Man, a nigga owe me, so, nigga owe me, da, da, da. what? Nigga, here come 300. With a 300, swatch that. Here come 300, bro. How much, nigga, man, bro, what, what we doing? Y'all need you to play Power Rangers together. Now y'all want to kill each other? That's real. You feel me? So... It ain't our music that's changing the streets. It's our presence changing the streets. You feel me? Huey, Bobby Seal, Bobby Hutton, whoever. They presence in Oakland changed the streets. Man. It wasn't them, them just talking. They was actually outside. It was their presence, man. So it's easy to for me to do this on the internet. That's easy, bro. That ain't going to... Nah, nigga, what you, nigga, what you doing? They want to shake your hand. They want to touch you. And people want to meet you. So do if you're doing it online, do it. But why, why not go out there one day? 
and be around them and shake their hand and love on them brothers, man. I agree 100%. It's, it's, it's easy. But, it, but a lot of people now don't have a heart to go out there. And you know that. These people just be on the internet. It's safe on the internet. This right? is it's what? It's very safe on the internet. But think about it. Bro, bro, you I go to the hood. Bro, that, bro, like, I can, nigga, I can feel your yeah, shit. Bro, <laughs> that's why I'm saying, okay, that's, that's all I'm saying. So when they be like, you need to do a song with such and such, you need to, I say, bro, hold up. I say, boy, no, I don't. Because that ain't the same kind. I say, no, I, I say the common goal is to get niggas to chill. True. That's the common goal, get niggas to chill. That's what we want, get niggas to chill, true indeed. But I don't, I don't, I don't preach when I rap. I teach when I rap. It's a difference. You know what I'm saying? You you pre when you preaching, you inspiring people when you preaching. When you teaching, when you teaching them, you gain them the game. You can only teach somebody who don't know something. But when you preaching, all you're doing is inspiring, making them get lifting their spirits up. That's what preaching does. I said, bro, I teach. If these niggas preaching and I'm teaching, nigga, that record ain't gonna even sound right, nigga. I'm straight. Let me ask you this: like you got you 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 had to you say you was reading the Bible. You referred to the nation of Islam. When you study at night, or when you study in the morning, or when you're trying to understand how to get to the next level. And you know, in being a better person, period. Whether it be just from looking at the sun, whatever you do, how do you get there? How do you grow when it comes down to being a better, a, a better you? Well, you, well, you, well, you good. <laughs> <laughs> no, because when you sit down and people, they don't even know how to talk. You feel me? Well, you good. I like, I like you, bro. Uh, you too, sister. <laughs> Listen, brother. Boy, that's boy, that's deep, bro. That's deep, and. Like, I'm a real selfish dude when it comes to me. You feel me? So, like, every day I eat. I, I'm 100% vegan. I go to the gym every single day. I read. I write. I can't say um that, that I'm... When I pray to the Father, it's not even for me. I don't pray for me. I pray for other people. Because I know how to set myself up for the blessing. You feel what I'm saying? I don't like the things that I have right now in my life, I'm satisfied with. You feel me? I'm not like a um uh uh, uh a materialistic person. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like I'm straight. So as far as me growing, it's just me working on myself and not being around around people bro because I love teaching people but I don't like being around people but I love teaching them though you feel me but I don't like being around people because people are hurt you bro you know what I'm saying niggas will break your heart dog you feel me females will play with you people will play with you man people will real life play with you and get mad when you want to knock their ass out you feel me so it's like in order for me to not in order for me to keep growing man I'll be ducked off solo by myself but how do you do you meditate? Do you read? What do you read? I, I read um books. I just read um Tavistock Institute, okay. On human relations. Okay, we got um Behold a Pale Horse. Okay, we got we got um we got the darkness. Um we got Illuminati six six six. Um I I mess with I mess with the Bible. The Hebrew Israelites gonna be like, nigga, what? <laughs> I mess with the Bible, but not how the average person does. You feel me? I actually believe the Bible is just the is just the story of the Israelites. I just believe it's a, a history book. Because it's stories. And it's stories from B C or A D. You feel me? So it's like if it's a story from B C or A D, it's a history book. That's all it is. You feel what I'm saying? I don't I don't look at God as I never Pray to God for money. Never. Work for money. Got niggas who don't even believe in God and got more money than niggas who believe in God. You feel me? Like, the way that I 
And I, I'm only saying it because you mentioned the Bible. You feel yeah, me? I, and, I, and I gotta say well, it like and, this. And, and I agree because, uh, e but even the Bible, when when you read it, because I read it and I teach it uh, and I study it, you know what I mean? And I live it. I've taught my children. We've never been a member of anything, though. We don't go nowhere or none of that. But at the end of the day, we be who we are. You know, we study. We It is a history. It's a thing where if you study the, the different movements in there, I mean, you'll read things like one of the things I always talked about was King Solomon being the wise wisest man of all time and it says that but then you also see where he got in the vine when he was building the temple lot of, lot and he couldn't even he couldn't, he couldn't even all, yeah. he couldn't even come up with the material to finish the uh the temple without uh without uh king with, without harem abiff he had to get that land he had to get material from harem but if you're the richest and the wisest it's like, why would you why need would you harem? Them? You know what I mean? So it's stuff like that. But then it's also kings and everybody in there that, that you see and you can look at their actions. And when you start looking at their actions, then you can maneuver in a way to learn it because you're looking at his history and you can see problems coming afar and be able to deal with them by looking at the psyche. You're not really, there, there are so many different ways it can help you, but you have to really be looking at it as a story. You have to look at it like you're walking on the hot desert sand, like you tied your camel to a date tree. So you have to get out of the way we think in America altogether, to be honest with you, in order to even understand it. So the culture, this, the, the things in the culture is what basically you have to start looking at to try to understand Man, why this was wrote that bro, way. You I'll know what I mean? this nigga right here. No, I'm and I'm gonna tell you why, <laughs> bro, cause that's like, that's like, okay, when they say, uh. It's better to cast a milestone around your neck and be thrown yeah. to the depths of the yeah. sea. You niggas don't even know what a milestone is. That's right, because you never even understood you the felt, culture. Okay, the milestone is a big old stone with a little small circle in it, and a stick come up out of it, and they tie it on the donkey, and the donkey walk right. around in circles, and it crushes olive oils. Exactly. That's what it is. That's but it's it. like, if you don't know what it is, you can't even visualize it. No. That's why I roll or, or, or an eye of a needle. When it, you're thinking it's an eye of a natural needle, when it's a camel trying to go through it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I so, never met nobody that knew that. But, you, but it's studying. The eye of a needle is a gate that That's only right. a man can fit through. That's but true. But the camel can get through it. That's but right. But the camel got to drop down you gotta on all fours. You got to take all the stuff off of it. That's right. I never in my life met nobody but, that knew that. But, but that's the truth, no, though. I'm, yo. I never in my life met nobody that knew that. Never. They think it's a physical need. My mama always told you that. Yeah. My brother was like, nigga, what you talking about? Yo, <laughs> I never met nobody in my life. And they always like, it's better for, did you know how? The preacher, do you know uh, how little I have a need of this? And you know, I'm you know. like, nigga, what is your nigga, you crazy? Yo, that's just like when the late when 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 they say uh okay uh a rich man compared to heaven and Christ was explaining like it's like when a when a woman loses a coin in her house yeah she got a sweep and the reason they were saying she had to sweep like that because the floors of the houses at that time had little like little bumps in the ground and that's she right. had to sweep to find a coin that's why but it's like niggas don't even know this so you have to research and you, you have to study. And, and, and so many people don't, and so even the word tells you to study, and, and but people don't study. Man. They don't take the time to even study that or other literature. Bro. I believe in studying all literature. I studied Quran, I've studied, you know what I mean? I've studied yeah. the Quran, I've studied the, uh, the Nawabuism, Hinduism, Buddhism, because you gotta study everything. Yo! Just understand Yo! anything. I've never been interviewed by nobody who was on this nigga level, cause this, and it ain't no disrespect to nobody, yeah. but bro. Yo, this what I did. I read this. I study all that. You have to study it in order to understand what you're what you're learning. Yo, you I call it open knowledge for God. To be honest with you, you know you have to have it in order this to teach others. Bro, the next time we sit down, I want us to just vibe like that. Oh, we gonna go in? And I'm gonna tell you why. Because niggas can't even talk like that. Oh. So when you sitting down trying to talk to people, bro, and it, yo, I don't always want to say all this crazy stuff that I done did. <laughs> Cause it's like, I, I want niggas to know like, yo, bro, no son, cause they can hear it in the music, but it's different when you talking it. That's right. Man, bro, this man right here is a well-read and studied brother and I never said Los Deep though. Yeah, yeah. That's Shout out to my brother Carlos. I, I, Los, I boy, Los Deep. Yeah. Los can get on his level. Yeah. But yeah. nobody else that I sat down with, I'm talking to these niggas looking at me like I'm a nerd or something. I'm like, nigga, yeah. nigga, you crazy? Bruh, you can't, bro, when you read the Bible, 
if you stop at the Bible, if I'm con conversing with someone and they just talking about the Bible, I don't even talk to them. No, no, you gotta be. I can't. Deep. I don't even. For what, bro? You ain't, bro. It's you because crazy? people are talking. They most of the time they're ignorant. You know what I mean? So ignorant. You know they'll say the white man wrote the Bible. He ain't even sharp enough to do that. You know what I mean? So it's man. stuff like that you start to see. <laughs> and I can't. I'm thing. like you. I don't even communicate <laughs> because you can't. Yeah. What is what? It's, it's real. What catch a goosebump? No, Bro. but it's so real. Boy, you the real deal, boy. Because at the end of the day, when you think about it, you start to deal with it. You deal with a lot of people who trying to find their way out of darkness, but they don't even understand. You know what I'm saying? How are they gonna come out of darkness without going to some type of light? You have to you have to open up and understand. But you in order to do that, like I said, you can't get caught up in reading just the Bible and not Thank going you. there mentally. You gotta Thank go. You. It, it, you got to learn the culture in order to even understand the Bible. And I'm telling you that. But And people, and, and most people will try to talk to you about it. And they don't even know. And so you have to be, but that's why you got to know bruh, how to feed them too. You know, know what I'm saying, saying bro? You got niggas who read the Bible, and but they read for error. They actually oh, read in for error. You feel me? Like sister just said. Study the show that's self-approved. Mm -hmm. A worse man need not be ashamed, but right, rightly right. divide rightly divine the truth, which is your reasonable service. Yeah. But it says that study the show that's self-approved. Why? So a nigga won't make you ashamed. So when yeah. you're talking to this nigga, nigga I say that all the time. You. I say that all don't. Mm -hmm. You got to study us, you're gonna what? be ashamed. Got, you know what I mean? That's what that's you should be ashamed of yourself, Bruh, is what I say. That's what that's it's for sure. Mean. Because people don't study, mm -hmm. so they, and then they'll come try to talk to you. And I just, you know, a lot of times. Or they'll say, my pastor said this. Or my pastor I don't even do all that, that with them. <laughs> all they need is shepherd. I mean, I don't get it. But at the end of the day, that's a, they probably fit a band me on this one. You know, the one thing I can say is, man, you know, I, I had this guy I was working with, working for, and I'll never forget something that I told him. I said, uh, you know, he was supposed to be a leader of us. And he is it, it on a, a commercial job, on the job I'm on now still, to be honest with you. But he's not there no more. But I told him, I said, a good shepherd is willing to lay down his life for the sheep. Man. You understand? Up, because talking, if you don't, if you don't, if you're not a, a, a real leader is willing to die for what he believe in. I don't see no leaders out here willing to die for what they believe in anymore. Bruh. If you're willing to die for it, it's going to hit different. You're going to communicate it different. You know what I told somebody, bro? That's just like, bro. See, man, that's the well, thank you for saying come here, brother. But listen, <laughs> I even told somebody that when it comes to a wife, I said, "Bro, I won't even ask her to marry me if I won't die for her." That's like true. while I'm asking her, at that very moment, I would have to be—I would have to be able to die for her. You feel me? Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the, love church. the church and gave Himself mm -hmm. for her. When I say, "Listen, Mama." Listen, man, uh, nigga, I did a lot of crazy, but I want to marry. Right there at that moment, I must be willing to die for her. That's right. And if I'm not there, I won't even ask her to marry me. Yeah. I won't ask no woman to marry me if I won't die for her. That's true. Because I know I ain't loving her the right way. You feel what I'm saying? I because agree, I am a believer. You feel me? You got to give me a rhyme, though. I hate to drop off of that. I ain't going to let you get out here without giving me a but rhyme. I, I want, you got to compel it because I don't have my other headphones. I don't need them. I, I, I just, I, I got to hear it. I've been wanting to say this, though, for the longest. Um, when I was listening to your story about the things that you've been through and, you know, with your mom, losing your mom, your daughter, all of this stuff, the, oh, the first thing that came to me was the book of Job. Wow. You understand what I mean? Ah, I feel you. And then people always be like, because that's one thing. I had on a shirt earlier. I, don't, I took it off now. But my thing is always everything happens for a reason. And people are like, and people have always not um, discussed this with me. And I always say, um... I said, how can you say that? How can you say that? Because God take kids. That's not everything. What do you mean by that? And this is my reasoning because you have to hold on to something so you don't go insane because everybody lose somebody at one time or the other in their life. And some people will go crazy by losing people because these are earthly things. You understand what I mean? And how I look at it, when a child is born, God clock you in at this job called Earth. Okay. And when your job is done, no matter how old you are, it could have been for a second because kids are kids die at birth. And people are like, how yeah. you take this child? OK, this mama life could have changed. This nurse life could have changed just because of this unborn child or this child that was about to be born. You don't know whose life could have been changed. Not our job to know that. But when your job is done, so I look at it no, no matter how old you are, when God take you, 
Your job is done here on earth. Right. You, you know, did, you touched. Your purpose been fulfilled. Right. Your purpose been fulfilled. You touched somebody. You changed somebody's life. That's how I look at life. And I always tell people, I said, you have to hold on to that because if the devil, and people are like, God, God allowed this or God, you know, wicked, this, that, whatever. No, if you know Job, the devil went to God and said, he had to go get permission, right? Permission to, to tempt this person, good and faithful servant. You see what I mean? So he's like, go ahead. But he allowed all of these things to happen because he's making you strong. If you're still here on this earth, I mean, you have a job to do. He's, all the things that you went through that you're like, it's wicked, it's this, it's that, it only makes you stronger. And people will look at life be like, because we live in the moment. We don't know what's to come. But a lot of times, even at this moment now, you look at your life, you're like, in order for you to deal with the things that you're dealing with right now, you had to go through what you went through in the past to be able to deal with what you're going through right now. So imagine the things that you're going through right now. What, What's your, what is preparing you for? You see what I mean? So that's how I personally look on life. Mm -hmm. And you have to hold on to something because, and I did that, man, God forbid, you know, I lose my kids or whatever, but anything can happen to anybody. If it happens to somebody, it can happen to you too. But you have to hold on to something. And that's how I hold on to my faith. and know that, you know what, God, I put it all in your hands. Because I know that if something ever happened, that job is done, God forbid. I don't want nobody to lose their kids, but it happens. You have to hold on to something so you don't go crazy. But you got to understand, you know, when I hear you, you talk about losing your mom and your daughter. I seen a dude, I remember a few years back where a dude was traveling and he lost his whole family and himself. Mm -hmm. They had an accident. You know what I mean? Or that lady that, or the, that man that was laying on the ground with me and you was going up to my, my daughter's house. Mm -hmm. And I told you, the car threw him out and he was on the way on just laying there. Like I said, man, these things, and, and I always tell people, how do you know that death is a bad thing? Have you experienced it? Ah, mm man, -hmm. yeah. You don't even know. You don't know mm -hmm. what happened. Like, it, yeah. I, I, I promise Rob yeah. be like that too, but yeah. I'll be, like, be like, how do you know? I'm like, I'm like, how you know? You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm trying to figure this out myself. <laughs> I, would you know? What, how did you get that knowledge? Right. <laughs> bro, you know what I be thinking, bro? It, it might, it's not crazy to me, right? Because it's like, like, when I be trying to sleep and I have like the, and I have like the nightmare, it, 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 it don't be things like, um, I'm sleep. I got shot, bam, it woke me up. I'm talking, it'd be like, my tongue got chopped out my mouth, my, my head got chopped, it'd be like so scary. Wow. You feel me? And it and it keep me from going to sleep because I'd be afraid to have the dreams. Yeah. I'd be tired, I'd be tired, but I don't wanna go because I don't wanna face that world because that's a whole nother, I, I have no control of that. But you know what? When I think of stuff like that, I think that it, it, the devil attacks us all in our mind. And that's where any any evil act starts in so your mind you first. Mind. Of course. Whether you dream it or not. You see what I mean? And when stuff like that happens, you know he's a devil. So if you know what it is, you rebuke him. Um, I promise you, I, pro I promise you, black woman, <laughs> I will not lie to you. No. Listen, I done heard it. I heard it like I'm. I I know scriptures like I'm, but like I told my brother, this the minister said this. This son the minister said, and I I, I take it with me, and I is is because it's solid. Mm -hmm. He say, not a minister talk. You may have beat the physical judge. You may have went to trial and won, but you can't beat the spiritual mm -hmm. judge. And I feel like I told this to somebody <laughs> probably like two weeks ago. I say, I say, man, I believe my sentence is almost over, but I believe I got sentenced. I did a lot of stuff, boy. <laughs> you don't believe you can be forgiven for all the stuff? Of course, done? no. I believe, of course, forgiven and punished is not the same thing. That's like if your child do something and you prune them, as the scripture says, but you still forgive them. But yeah. go to your room. Or right. spanking here, pop, pop, pop. You still love them though. Got it's it. like, yo, I don't, yo, I'm supposed to be down. I'm mm -hmm. talking for 30, 40, 50 years, man. Like the gas chamber or something. You feel me? And it's like, you think, oh, you think. I told my homeboy from Lake Charles, Louisiana, I said, bro, sometimes 
I be so mad that I can't sleep, that I that I wish I was dead, bro, because I be so tired. But as soon as I sleep, it's like, yeah, nigga, we got you. Wow. And it be so scary. And that, that's my brother. Yo I, yo, I live by myself. It's quiet because I don't want to be around nobody. You feel me? Every relationship that I was in with a woman, every relationship I was in, I either pushed out the bed, I even swung, or it swung on a punch in the mouth, but not intentionally, yeah, but sleeping. from me sleep. And this my girl next to me, yo. Yeah. Swung on her. Pushed out the bed, pinched the skin, got bruises. Up. Yo, from sleep. Yeah. Punched a hole in the wall. Wow. Yo, every single night, I'm on a plane, sleep on a plane, jump up and punch. No. The, no, I'm serious. I swear. On, Did you I, punch somebody? No, I punch. Good thing. I was a window seat. Man, them crackers wouldn't, them crackers wouldn't have been trying to hit that. Mm-mm, I would have had a dream. Man, get your, get your ass You would have been banned. Back. You would have been banned. But this is what I'm saying, yo, is nowhere. Just sleep nowhere. I'm I'm jumping. Because it's like, they, it's like you thought you got a nigga, they, it's, boy, they were there. It's like they be right there. Like, we got you. Come on, bring your ass to the nigga. We got you. Wow. And it's like mad scary, yo. Wow. I'm telling you, man. Um, you, hey, thank you so much for coming on the show. I gotta get that. I gotta get that freestyle. Mm-hmm. Though. I got, well, I ain't gonna, I, that, I give got me you. some. No, I got you. Ain't no pressure, brother. Um, I already know you. I know what you do. Um, yeah, I watch you. Okay, so um, I'm like um, since we talking about this, man. Um, let me see. Okay. All right. Boom. You, I gotta take you there. I gotta take you with me. So you, you feel me? You, you, man, you did time, bro. You know, heart full of rage. Twenty three hours in confinement. It's dark in this cage. One hour of freedom. You know to get some time to step in the yard, but the sun nearly blinds you. But am I really confined physically, or is it an illusion that only happens mentally? They say that freedom is a mind state. Look at the crime rate, Stevie Wonder calls life a blind race, and I believe him. Cause finish lines, I can't see them. Intelligent bunch of people, I can't read them. That's why I keep my distance. My whole aura and existence, locked behind fences, gotta protect my energy. Ah, beat the physical judge, but the spiritual judge sentenced me. I can't sleep, nightmares keeping me up. Flames heating me up, demons eating me up. But as I walk through the valley, with no lust in my heart, so Jezebel can't trap me, emotionally drained. Diagnosed with psychosis. See, I'm supposed to be insane, but I'm level-headed. Childhood was just hard, nigga. At 14, I faced life behind bars, nigga. True story, my stories are true. Helping another man takes no glory from you, but it's like having a good heart gets you hurt quick or want the benefits, but they ain't putting in the work with you. No stress zone. This nigga told me time was fake. Meanwhile, he had a Rolex on. Fake woke niggas, fake activists, fake Martin Luther Kings and John the Baptists. Man, you all burning hell, nigga. And made the rest of the false prophets all burning hell with you. Preacher man, why you lied to me? How was heaven in the sky when God's living inside of me? You got to unlearn to relearn. You got to undo and do it again. And maybe you will win. But your mind has been conditioned. Western civilization doctrine got you submitting. Gave up your morals, dignity, and manhood. Might as well sold your soul for some canned goods. Pause. Man, oh, look. Man, listen, man. I love, I love that, bro. That's- Everything you said, man. Like, like when, you, when you look at going down through there like that. Somebody gonna get some help when they hear that, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I know you doing it because it, it's really therapy. It's therapy. It's straight up therapy. It pretty much helps you to release. You know what I mean? So is it, when you just be in the car and you just be going off like you do, man, is it how do you come up with the stuff that you come up with? Bro, everything I just we just talked about is what you, you saw what I just rapped yeah. about. Yeah. But it's the bro, it's it's the darkness, bro. It's the sleepless nights. It's the that's why all my music sound like, sound like it don't sound like nothing that's out. It sound not it don't sound weird, but it sound like this nigga battling something like spiritually. This nigga really bugged the fuck out. You feel me? It's like, bro, I can't sleep, bro. I can't. And and, and and I hate it so much that I would rather not be here because I be tired, bro. I be tired, bro. That's why I say I. 
beat the physical judge, but the spiritual judge sentenced me. That's right. That's why I said I just told you. That's why yeah. I said that. It's like you 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 don't you never get away with it. You never nothing. get away with it. No, top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Any, Any genre. genre. Woo! I do that. What? That's okay. what I do. Yeah. Man, God. This as far as only all three. around No, I'm gonna break yeah. I'm gonna break it down. As far as all around yep. pin everything. Mel all around, Bob Marley, number one. Okay. Did all you watch the movie yet? Um, nah, I don't, I don't even, I don't, nah, I'm good. <laughs> and ain't no disrespect to the actor, you feel me? But I need real y'all mind, you feel me? No, but it was actually- I heard it was fire. It was. <laughs> she Jamaican. And what I loved about the movie, I want to say 80% of the actors in the movie was real Jamaicans. Oh, Okay. So that's what I was proud of. I, 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 I was just, really proud of that. It's just like that's my all time favorite artist, man. Like you should go, you should give it a chance. I, I might, I might. And give I told my chance. brother, I was like, I don't want to watch that. Man, nigga, I, don't, nigga, I felt the same dog, way at first. <laughs> I felt the same like, way at this, first. This is the great. I actually think this is the greatest man ever, as far as when it comes to entertainment. Yeah, I think he's the greatest ever. Okay, and number two. Don Caluminati, baby, Tupac, man. Mm -hmm. I can hear that in your, in yeah. your, because it, it touching a place. Yeah, it's touching like, that place. You know what I'm saying? When you was right, I'm like, it's coming from a bro, place. Number two is Don Caluminati, pop, baby, and um, number three. Number three. That's the hardest one. Um, um, it's a toss up. It's kind of a tie, but I'm gonna have to give it to her, Lauren Hill. Wow. Awesome. Top yeah. three if, if not, time. it would have it would have been Nas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You feel me, man? Yeah, hey, man. No, thank I'll you so much. Lauren Hill. Hey. Yeah, I, I gotta get the Lauren Hill. How, how can people get a hold of you? Uh, on Keith Wallace, just um, just Google my name, man. You can Google Keith Wallace or Keith Wallace three hundred five, and it'll pop up. Yeah, it'll pop up, man. Um, and I appreciate y'all. Appreciate you, bro. I appreciate y'all, brother. Um. And ground. it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk. Make sure you guys look at these clips, man, that's coming at you, man. Keith Wallace just yes, killed the game on Boss Talk 101. Love y'all. Boss is talk. Shalom and to the 12.